This is the cheapest and in my opinion the most underrated flagship Samsung sells right now. So let's talk about it. comes down to a few differences between this phone and a regular S21. That is, the slightly slower optical fingerprint scanner in the display of this phone and also the slightly larger battery this phone has over the regular S21. But there is a whole lot going on for this phone that requires more attention. So let's start with the design. It has a plastic matte back and a metal railing which also helps in selling the premium experience. Speaking of experience, this phone comes with One UI 4.1 based on Android 12 and it has some pretty neat features like RAM Plus that allows you to use some part of your phone storage as small RAM and also comes with smart widgets. Also, my personal favorite, the custom color palette thing that allows you to set your own color palette based on the wallpaper that you have in your phone. Now, let's move on to what actually helps you to see your wallpaper and also the entire experience of the phone. That is the display. Well, the display on this phone is just amazing. I can go as far as to say it's one of the best displays I've seen on a phone so far. The colors on this phone's display is just amazing, like you'd expect from Samsung or Samsung displays from their flagship lineup. It also feels really smooth when it comes to scrolling through social media and web pages or generally playing video games. Thanks to the 120 hertz refresh rates that display has. Speaking of something that also impresses me with its smoothness is the performance. Let's talk about performance, shall we? Well, the performance on this phone is what you expect from a flagship phone or a phone at this price point. It's actually really good. It's able to handle everything I throw at it. It also it's powered by the same chipsets that runs the regular S21 series. That is the Snapdragon 888 or last year's Exynos from Samsung. While I can say this phone is easily a full day use, I haven't really had much luck in that department because I have to charge the battery once or twice a day. But then again, that could be because I give this phone a ton of pressure throughout my week of testing it just to know the limits of this phone. So keep that in mind when you're having it. And speaking of battery and charging, this phone supports fast charging, support, it charges very fast, and also supports reverse wireless charging. So I find myself using it to charge my AirPods Pro, which is really convenient for me when I'm in town and I don't have a power bank and my AirPods Pro are dying out. So you should keep that in mind. Now, since we're on the topic of performance, I would like to talk about one feature that I feel is not spoken about and it's actually a feature on most samsung flagships since the s8 and the note 8 till present day that is samsung dex let's go outside hey so i had to come outside set up outside especially by the roadside to, to show you how cool the dex dock or the dex on samsung devices is so what you need is your phone and then you have your pc your dock, your mouse and keyboard, like a system unit and everything, and then you just put your phone in the dock. Well, now that you have this turned on, you can use your phone as a system unit, provided you have your mouse and keyboard, monitor, and then the dock. While I can't really justify spending that amount of money or a ton of money to buy just a dock so that you can use your phone as a system unit, you can actually use just your USB Type-C cable your phone and then connect it to your PC or a monitor that supports that or an HDMI to USB Type-C cable and it takes like your phone experience to the next level you will be able to enjoy the multitasking and then some of the functionalities you've come to expect and love from like your normal Windows PC or your Mac on your phone just that like you'll be running Android apps and it's pretty neat. I find myself wanting to use it all the time when I do have the chance and also to edit videos on my phone but then with a monitor and it's actually really good. Now let's get to the part that is most exciting that we're all waiting for which is the cameras. I absolutely love the images that I get from this phone I because I love taking pictures. Now apart from the portrait mode and the normal captures of 
photos that this phone has. It has um, features such as the night mode, which takes amazing night pictures. It has the food. If you're a foodie and you like taking pictures of your food, it's like awesome for you. And my personal favorite is the single take. It captures moments. You can put it into GIFs or um, short videos and very, very amazing pictures that you can get. Now, but the only problem that I have is the auto HDR of this phone is kind of a hit and miss. Now, when it comes to videos, this phone um, caps at 4K, whilst the regular or the usual S21 um, go up to 8K. But then again, how many people do you know watch 8K videos in full resolution? How many that I can think of? I personally love HDR, especially HDR videos. This one actually um, maintains the feature of the S21 to allow you to shoot HDR 10 plus videos. And it also has amazing pro mode that helps you to get the most out of your camera. My final thoughts about this phone is it's actually really great and I would totally recommend it even though we already have the S22 lineup out right now. And like I always say, unless you are thinking of getting the Plus or Ultra models of the S2 or even the S21 lineup, this phone is actually pretty good. Well, the only difference between this and the Plus model is probably the size and based on how compact it is and then the screen it provides. I, I like it. I like it too. By the way, tell me your thoughts. Would you recommend this to someone or would you buy it yourself in the comment section below? And also, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.